The Anderson Family. I don't see why Junior can't go with you to your broadcast, Oliver. But I'm trying to tell you, Mary, they won't let children in the studio. But Junior's so proud of you, dear. Oh, of course he is. But can't he be just as proud staying home and listening to our own radio? Uh-oh. Here we go again, folks. <laughs> Let's visit the Anderson family. You wouldn't believe that one person, and I'm speaking of Oliver Anderson, could take things so seriously, do everything the hard way, and still keep his balance. For instance, this evening, Oliver has been chosen by the Big Brother Club to be a part of the radio program for better understanding between boys and their parents. So right this moment, we find Oliver in the attic, digging his army uniform out of a trunk. Why, Oliver, all these bottles in the trunk, where on earth did they come from? Well, I'm not sure, but your father always wanted to read in the attic, remember? Mm, they say we should turn in all our empty bottles. They mean milk bottles. Well, there are so many of them. Yeah, your father read a lot. Wait, don't drop those papers, Oliver. Here, hand them to me. Paper? Oh, th those are uh, <clears throat> art pictures I was saving for Homer Meister. Art pictures? Hmm. Looks as though you're in business with Petty and Varga. It's a good thing Junior doesn't come up here looking around. Well, now, I don't see anything wrong in pictures. Some people like landscapes, some like marine scenes. But you just like people. Yes, I know. Mm. Here, I'll burn them. No, 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 wait. I promised him to Homer to pin up in his garage. Well, I don't know where he'd pin them. Oh, all right, go ahead. I don't care what you do with them anyhow. Well, we'll just put them over here on this box. Yeah? Yeah, I didn't know where you were. Oh, come on in, dear. We're getting your father's army uniform. Pop? Yeah? Do they let kids in the radio studio? Not under 12. But I'm 12. Yeah, but you're small for your age. I just have an argument down at the radio station, and I'm no mood for another one. Your father's very nervous, Junior. After all, he has almost two pages to read. I'm not a bit nervous. And one of the big brothers is coming over to the Gargoyle Boys Club and pick out a representative boy for the program tonight, Pop. Well, that's different. They're on the program. But I can't take you in with me. Wouldn't you like it better to sit at home, Junior, and hear me over the air? It's no fun that way. You can hear him on our radio, Junior. Uh, just keep your hands off those pictures, dear. I'm burning them. All those? I've seen them. Uh, uh, Oliver, bring your uniform downstairs. It needs some dusting and pressing from the way it looks. If I kept real still, I don't see why anyone would object to my going to your broadcast, Pop. I don't make the rules, Junior. I'm lucky to get in there myself. Now, here, hold this needle. Run on, Junior. Someday Mother will take you down to a broadcast. Oh, sure. Mother will get you in when Pop flops. I didn't say that. It would seem to me that I've had enough to worry about. I've never talked into a microphone before. There's no I... reason why you should snap our heads off. And if you don't stop moving around, Oliver, you'll get stuck with this needle. I'm not. I'm worried. Can't you see that? Oh, maybe I could just look through that glass window and watch. I could tell the kids at the Gargoyle Club all about it. Ah, uh, uh, wait a minute, Mary. Will you look where you're sewing? Don't look at Junior. Well, maybe you'd better run on, Junior. Your meeting at the Gargoyle Club is in half an hour. Yeah, have the boys listen on the radio and then tell them it's your father. Uh-huh. You don't seem very enthusiastic about it. Can you blame him? Wait, well, wait a minute, Mary. Oh, these trousers are not going to fit. Well, I'm glad you realize it. You've certainly gained around the waist since you wore this uniform. Why wear the uniform again, Pop? Simply because all of the founders of the club are ex-servicemen and they asked me to wear it, that's why. Go on, Junior. Get yourself cleaned up for your meeting. And let me for alone for a minute. I'll be a nervous wreck. Gee, Pop, I hope you don't make any mistakes. Well, it'll be a wonder if I don't. Oh, I feel a little bit like a meanie, Oliver. 
Junior's so wrapped up in what you're doing. You're so abrupt with him and so nervous. Well, who wouldn't be? Look at this uniform. Three sizes too small. Now, now, just calm yourself. You can stop in the costume shop. I'm sure they'll have your size and it'll be nice and new. Say, hey, that's an idea. I'll go down there right now. Have about three hours before airtime. I think that's best, dear. I'll ask Junior to sit right in front of the radio. Mm -hmm. Now you're being sarcastic. I'm not either, dear. But he won't be there because he wants to be there. I think you misunderstand him, Oliver. Don't worry about that, too. Hurry and get your uniform. Oh, now what? Uh, howdy, Oliver. Oh, it's Homer. Is this trip necessary, Homer? Necessary? Uh, well, yes and no. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I'm just leaving. I thought if it would wait... Oh, I... of course. Uh, I don't want to hold you up, none. Hello, Homer. Hiya, Mary. Won't you sit down, Homer? Well, uh, yes, I guess it can. Well, it isn't compulsory, you know, Homer. Well, how's Martha? Uh, Marthy? Mm, well, I, I'd rather not say, Mary. Uh, we ain't speaking. <laughs> that should make you smile. Nope, nope. My heart is broke, Oliver. I'm accused of being sweet on that cashier at the gym cafe. Oh, Homer. I'm sure that cashier wouldn't be interested in you. Oh, now, wait a minute. Why wouldn't she? Ain't nothing wrong with me. Except... Uh, Mary didn't mean that. Mary just didn't think the girl's IQ was low enough for that. Oh, well, that's different. What happened, Homer? Well, that waitress has been kind of shining up to me lately, and I've been kind of avoiding her. Mm, how often have you been down to the cafe? Oh, on and off, uh, every night. Mm -hmm. mm, you're avoiding her, huh? Yep, I am. See, uh, I went down to straighten out some eat checks with uh, this Tuttle feller signed. Tuttle? The new rumor at your house? That's right. And I sort of co-signed the eat checks with him, and, well, sir, I, I was back at the counter, and I kind of reached around her to get a match, and, uh, Marthy walked by the window. Uh-oh. Well, you're kind of tired of Marthy anyway, Homer. No, 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 you're wrong there, Oliver. Oh, you Casanova. Who's he? You wouldn't know him. He never ate there. Uh, oh. But, Homer, Martha would understand if you told her. Told her? What was Homer doing in the cafe? What was he doing behind the counter? Why didn't he ask for a match? Oh, no, Martha's got him this time. Uh, it ain't so, I tell you. I'm innocent, I be. Well, you can yell innocent until midnight, and you're still going to sleep in the garage. Well, it ain't my fault. Mabel, uh, uh, I mean, the, the cashier keeps uh, fawning on me all over me around it. I don't recip... Uh, uh, I don't recip... Return it. Yep, yep, that's it. Return it. Uh, then this Tuttle feller, he starts barging in and trying to get her eye. Mm, took Mabel away. And took Mabel away. No, he done no such thing. I'll get it, Oliver. Hello, Anderson's residence. Oh, yes. Well, how are you, Mrs. Chapman? Tell her to listen to my talk tonight. Why, I'm sure I don't know what time the boys are going. Have her old man listen, too. He knows me. I'll have Junior call when he comes downstairs, Mrs. Chapman. Yes, you bet I will. Bye. Why didn't you tell her to listen to me? She's going out this evening. Uh, what talk you doing tonight, Oliver? Oh, oh, it's not much, Homer. Just run in, run in and out, that's all. Oh, oh, not in them clothes, huh? Looks like you got more stomach than pants. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm going to have to rent a uniform, one that fits. Oh. Excuse me, Homer. I'll get it, Oliver. Hello, Andersons. Oh, yes. Hello, Mrs. Gonko. Oh, how are you, Gertie? Have Gertie listen to my speech tonight. Oh, is that so? Splendid. Have Judge Gunkel listen, too. I certainly shall. Thanks for calling. Tell him to listen to my speech to... What did you say, dear? Oh, I said have them listen tonight. Are you afraid to have anyone know I'm on the air? Are you ashamed of it? Oh, now calm yourself, Oliver. Well, what did she want, anyway? Just wanted to ask me to listen to Judge Gunkel tonight. Listen to Judge Gunkel? Why, yes. He's on the program, too. Oh, I see. They're taking just anybody on this thing, huh? That's no way to talk about the judge, Oliver. Have they called you to speak on tonight's program, Homer? Nope, not as yet. Well, just stay around the phone. They will. And I'm going before I have time to think this thing over. Call me before the program, dear. I'll drive down. I will. Maybe they'll take pictures, too. If they do, I'll save you one, Homer. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Something? Or uh, are you just in out of the rain? Uh, no, I'm uh, looking for a uniform to wear tonight. Ah, splendid, splendid. Uh, uniform, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, doorman, usher, cab driver, or waiter? No, no, just an army uniform. Uh, what's wrong with the uniforms they issue you? Well, nothing. I haven't been issued any. Hmm, a fine army. No uniforms. Must be grabbed somewhere. Uh, look, you've got the wrong idea. I'm not in the army. Not in the army? Then uh, why do you want a uniform? 
To make a talk on the radio, I'm entitled to wear a uniform, but mine's too tight. Seems to me you could get some action by writing to your congressman. Look, look, my friend, I just want to rent a uniform. Oh, oh, why, yes, of course, uh, you want to rent one of our uniforms. Yes, that's right. Why, of course, uh, that will be $11. Well, wait a minute, I haven't been even fitted yet. Oh, well, if you're going to be fussy about it, it'll cost you more. Look, 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 first, do you have an officer's uniform? We do. Good, now we're getting someplace. Let's try it on. Hmm, officer's uniform. Is, will that be uh, French, English, Russian, Scottish, or do you want pants with it? Pants? Of course. An American uniform, second lieutenant. Here we are. Just slip into this for size. Where? Uh, right here in this dressing room. Uh, look, do you have a parade cap with this? Why, yes, and uh, we include a whistle, too. Well, I don't want a whistle, but I can use a belt. Ah, there. Uh, how does that look? Just splendid, sir, but splendid. And I'll just wear it. Now, uh, your credentials, please. You mean I have to have credentials? You wouldn't want to wear your business suit this evening. Well, no, of course not. Then let's have your credentials. Look, I'll, I'll write you a check for whatever it is. That will be fine. And uh, give your social security number, place of employment, and $16 in cash. Sixteen? You said eleven dollars. Eleven for the coat, uh, four for the trousers, and one for the cap. Hmm. Maybe I'll just pay in cash. Here you are. Now, ten... Fifteen, sixteen, is that right? Thank you. That pays you up until ten this evening. Oh, well, I'll have it back by that time. But wait a minute, these, hey, these eagles on the shoulder. This is a colonel. I have to be a second lieutenant. Well, what do you want for sixteen dollars? A five-star general? Well, no, but I... You have the uniform, sir, and that's what counts. Uh, well, maybe you're right. Uh, do you have a phone? Well, yes, uh, right there on the counter. Thanks. Colonel's uniform. Well, I'll alibi it somehow. Yes, Anderson. Uh, Mary, this is Oliver. I have the uniform. Oh, I'm so glad. You'll get it all wet in this rain, won't you? Say, maybe you're right. Uh, look, have Homer drive you down and meet me in front of the radio station at 8.40 sharp. Okay, darling. And you might suggest to Junior that he listen to me tonight. Junior? Why, well, if he gets home in time, dear. Bye. Okay, goodbye. Uh, now, uh, about the rain, uh, uh, you wouldn't want to get that uniform all wet, would you? Why, uh, no, I guess not. <laughs> I thought not. Now, here, use this umbrella. Gee, thanks. You think of everything. Indeed, I do. And that will be three dollars extra for the umbrella. Three dollars extra? Yes, and ten cents for the phone call. Oh. Now back to the Anderson family. Oliver Anderson has just rented an army uniform to replace his own, which was too small for him, and is on his way to the radio station where he is to make a short talk. Mary Anderson is waiting for him in front of the radio station, and the rain is coming down very lightly. Oliver? Oh, oh, I, I didn't see you, Mary. I wasn't playing hide and seek. I was just getting in this doorway out of the rain. Well, is Homer going to pick us up? Right after your broadcast. How does the uniform look? Hmm, looks rather nice. What's that on your shoulder? Oh, oh, that. Well, the man at the store didn't have any lieutenant's bars, so we just left the eagles on. Oh, well, no one will notice them. By the way, you only have a few minutes. Here's the radio station. We'd better get on in. Yeah, I think so. Now, oh, where do we go? Well, how do I know? Quiet. Quiet, Mary. Well, I didn't this see This is you. not the Union Depot, sir. Hmm? You must have it quiet in the studios. Let me see your tickets. Tickets? Well, we don't have any. Well, then you'll have to write in and close a self-addressed envelope. They'll be mailed to you. Mailed to me? Well, I don't want any tickets. Everyone must have a ticket. But Mr. Anderson is on the air here this evening. What are you running for? I'm running for nothing. Well, then how do you make anything out of it if you win? You misunderstand us. Mr. Anderson is speaking on the Big Brother program this evening. Oh. Well, then, of course, that's different. Why are we whispering? I don't know. It's your station. Well, do we go right in? Oh, sure, yes, of course. Uh, may I see your speech? See it? Well, uh, I guess so. It's not too good, I guess. Well, I'm not interested in the quality, sir. Uh, has uh, has the script been approved by our editor? Well, uh, no. Is that necessary? Oh, very much so. You can't broadcast till it's been checked. Well, where do I get it checked? Well, uh, Miss Bilge takes care of that. She's gone for the day, uh... Just mail it in tomorrow. Mail it in tomorrow. The speech is tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, uh, 
then you go right down this hall and ask for Mr. Sly, Sylvester Sly. He's a, he's a gentleman with a chin. Oh. Uh, he'll glance it over for you. I, I've got a program now, so be quiet, please. We're always happy to have visitors in our station. Happy? Hmm. You should carry a whip. Well, time's running out on you, Professor. Let's get down the hall and find Mr. Sly. There's a door right there with that red light lit. Probably an exit. Let's try it anyhow. We only have a few minutes. All right, come on in. Look at all those people sitting there. This must be the studio. Look, that announcer fella's waving at us. Hmm, wonder what he wants. Well, maybe I'm on early. Let's go and see. <laughs> Good, good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a half hour of fun on Guess Who I'm Thinking Of and Take Home a Washing Machine program. Now, this program is entirely unrehearsed and brought to you by the makers of Tin Toes, the new toenail polish for old toes. And I, I see our first contestant is coming up on the stage now. <laughs> uh, how do you do, sir? Uh, hello there. Uh, your name, please. Well, I told you out there in the hall, Oliver Anderson. Uh, Oh, yes, of course. And now, now, here's a little question, and if you answer it correctly, you will receive our gallon size of Tinto, spelled T-I-N-T-O-Z-E. Tinto, the new wonder polish for unruly nails. Now, if you answer the question within 10 minutes, you'll receive also 15 silver dollars. All right now, sir. All right, here, here's our question. What color is Paris green? Uh, may I hear that question again, please? Of course, of course. <laughs> What color is Paris green? Ah, uh, no coaching. <laughs> uh, hurry now, time is running out on you. <laughs> Paris green. Yeah. Well, it's green, isn't it? Absolutely correct! <laughs> Paris is green! <laughs> you gallon of tintos for tired nails and for your promptness, sir. Here's your green silver dollars! And thank you a lot for answer. <laughs> Let's get out of here. This isn't the studio. What on earth's going on? Here, take this jug of stuff. Oh. I'll keep the $15. You should have known better than go into that studio. You saw that red light lit. Don't argue with me now. We can do that at home. I'm not arguing, Oliver, but I told you about that red light. I, I, I know you did. That isn't the question. Wait, doesn't that look like Mr. Schultz, the butcher, coming down the hall? Schultz? Don't tell me they let him in here. Shh. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Anderson. Oh. Why, my, how lovely you look. Oh. I, sure, I am sorry you didn't get here sooner. You, you would have enjoyed my little talk on the Big uh, Brother broadcast. Big Brother broadcast? Uh, yes, one of the speakers didn't show up, so they put me on. Oh, how nice. Sorry we missed you. Well, didn't it go on early? Well, yes, it was rather unexpected. Uh, they're having the junior section of the program in about an hour. Well, it looks as though we've missed the broadcast, Oliver. A shame, too, Mrs. Anderson. I, I did write Right, well, if I do say so. Uh, well, good evening. Oh, by the way, I'm running a special on short ribs tomorrow, Mrs. Anderson. Oh. I don't like them. Good night. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. Well, good night. Fine thing. You never even noticed my uniform either. Just show how catty men can be. Oh, come now. Don't take it so to heart. I'm not, but Junior will be home with his ear glued to the radio. I'll explain to him. Well, I'm going to wait and see if I can get some satisfaction before I leave here. Well, while you do that, I'll go see if Homer's arrived yet. If he has, I'll wait in the car and he can pick you up. I'll have to take this uniform back, too, you know. How much did it cost? Oh, now, don't start that here in a hallway. <laughs> Good night, sir. Happy to have had you with us this evening. Visitors are always welcome in the studio. Thank you. Good night. Gee, it's raining. I better slip in this doorway and wait for Homer. You'll get out wet out there, mister. Well, yeah, it is a little wet out here. There's room for you to stand here in the doorway. Huh? Oh, oh, well, thanks. <laughs> it is kind of raining. Gee, an officer, huh? Was an officer. Gee, an admiral. I can tell by them ducks on your shoulder. <laughs> Not exactly an admiral. <laughs> Gee, I'm just crazy about uniforms. My sister married a doorman. Guess she fell for the break. <laughs> Are you married? Well, uh, yes, I am. Uh, oh, oh, excuse me. Here's Homer, my friend, looking for me. Homer? You mean this little guy coming? Yeah. Oh, I've been waiting half an hour here alone for my husband. It just goes to show a girl can't trust any man anymore. All men ain't the same. Oh, oh here, here you are. Uh, Why, well, yes, where's the car? Oh, it, it's right over here behind that... Well... <laughs> uh, who's your friend? Look, Homer, I just stood in here out of the rain. I never saw this young lady before. Oh, you didn't. No, know. I didn't. Well... 
<laughs> oh, looks mighty lonely. Poor kid. Uh, 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 maybe you'd want to drive Mary on home, Oliver. Hmm? And I'll, I'll sort of come on later. Ah, uh, huh? no, you don't. I'm not going to have Martha blaming me for your troubles. Besides, I have to take this uniform back to the take store. Take the uniform back? You mean you're a phony? I mean nothing of the sort. Now, look, Homer, you take Mary home. I'll get out there on a streetcar. Oh, you'll come home later, eh? Oh, I get you. Did Oliver seem worried when you talked to him, Homer? Worried? Mm-hmm. Well, he he did a little at first. I, I kind of took him by surprise, but he's got over it now, I guess. You think we should go back and get him? Take him to the store to get his clothes? Oh, no, 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 no. He seemed kind of upset like when I saw him. Mm, he always gets upset over things like this. What's wrong, Homer? You seem so quiet. Oh, nothing. Uh, just thinking. Uh, Oliver makes friends kind of easy, don't he? <laughs> I guess he does. But he has to know a person pretty well before he gets interested in them. Oh, he does, eh? Mm, I guess. Why, Homer, why do you ask? Oh, nothing. Uh, just that I like Oliver, too, I guess. <laughs> you don't mean that Oliver's been signing eat checks down to the cafe. Nope, nope, he ain't. Well, uh, guess I better step on it a little. Uh, Martha will probably worry about me. <laughs> you, Oliver? Yeah, Junior home? I haven't seen him. That's funny. Did you call the Gargoyle Club? Mm, I, I did. No one answered. I called Mrs. Chapman. She said Butch had gone someplace with Junior. Gone where? She didn't know. I wonder if they went to a show. If he did, he's in for it. Oh, maybe they let him uh, go with them to the radio station. Well, he'd been home by this time if he had. Well, look, it's only 8.30. 8.30? That clock stopped. Well, it might be a good plan to set it. I'll get the time from the radio. Imagine that fellow at the radio station saying, we always are happy to have visitors, and then throws you out. Shh, here's the time. And now it's my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to bring you the most representative boy in our big brother club, Junior Anderson. Junior? He's on the air. Quiet, be still. Let me get in there. Turn it up. I guess all I can say is, <clears throat> if a boy goes halfway with his pop, he'll come out all right. Of course, some boys don't want to be like their father. But no matter how peculiar he may seem at times to us, he's generally right. I'm not peculiar. Quiet. Quit pushing me. Hey, if my folks are listening in, hello, Mom. Hi, Pop. I'll be right home. Okay, Junior, no hurry. Oliver. Oh. Gee, Junior on the radio. Now, I suppose I'll never hear the end of this. Well, I don't think Junior will ever even mention it, Just Oliver. Just think they chose him to speak. Oh, it makes me very happy. And we're both happy. Well, maybe we could down, get out to the store and get a pint of ice cream so he could eat when he comes home. Pint? Oh, all right, a quart. Gee, I wonder if Homer heard him talking on the radio. Mm, I don't think so. Homer acted rather strangely on his way home. Strange? Hmm? Uh, what'd he say? Why? Was there something he should have said or shouldn't have said? Well, no. You see, she was standing in the doorway first. She? In what doorway? Huh? Oh. No wonder you wanted to take your uniform back by yourself. Now, wait a minute. I was just in out of the rain, and Homer walked up. There's nothing wrong in that. Nothing wrong? Oh, of course not. You didn't know she was standing there, of course. You know I wouldn't do a thing like that, and here you were so happy just a minute ago. I'm happy now. See? That's what happens to Homer. It's just a mistake, you say. Yes, I know, but Homer has to pay for his mistakes. A uh, fine thing. It wouldn't have been so bad if Homer hadn't seen it. He'll tell Martha. Martha will tell everyone she meets. Oh, Oliver, how could you do such a thing to me? Yep, who is it? It's Oliver. Oh, just a minute. Thanks, Homer. Uh, wait, wait, Oliver. I, I want to barricade the door again. Uh, Martha, you know. Uh, it's right nice of you to come out to the garage and keep me company, Oliver. Yeah. Yeah, it gets kind of lonesome out here alone, these long, dark nights. Well, you can cheer up, Homer. Huh? Yeah. 
I'm spending the night with you. The Anderson Family is written by Howard Swart, directed by Herb Litton, and features Dick Lane as Oliver, Louise Arthur as Mary, Walter Tetley as Junior, and Herbert Rollinson as Homer. Also in the cast were Paul Theodore, Jenny Johnson, and Doug Young. Music by Gordon Kibbe, sound effects by Ray Erlenborn, and your announcer is Ken Peters. The Anderson Family is a Hollywood Broadcasters production, transcribed from Hollywood. Hollywood.